Hello and thank you for watching Crokinole Center's presentation of the 2016 Belleville Crokinole Challenge Final. Nathan Walsh is the challenger to the two times defending champion Justin Slater who's seated on the right. Justin overshot his first shot slightly and Nathan rolled out of the house defensively. Nathan has the hammer in this first round shooting the black discs. He makes a nice take out there, hit and stick. Justin rolls to the offside, trying to force perhaps a tie in this round, but it's still very early. Nathan pulls that one right back off a peg. He's forcing Justin to come through the pegs here. He rolls off to the five. Slater's in a bit of a difficult spot in this round. Walsh has complete control as he sticks that one behind the pegs defensively. Slater chooses wisely to peel off and leave Walsh to play towards the middle. The shot, a nice easy hit and stick. Slater really has to make a complete transfer there. It rolls just a little bit further than he would have hoped. He has to try to, uh, to make something out of this position. Nathan holds that back really nicely. Justin's going to have to hope for a really lucky bounce. Puts it between the pegs. Nathan with a shot here. He rolls a bit towards Justin's side. He's left the door just slightly open here. Here comes the shot. Slater makes the 20, but he's left Walsh's disc on the board in the 10. If he can stick this in the 15, he'll win the round, which he does. The first two points of this championship match go to Nathan Walsh. This is a best of three games final, and each of the games consists of four rounds with two points on offer in each. Should any player hit five points, that is an insurmountable total, and they will win the round. The game, rather. Nathan Walsh is now to shoot first in the second round. Here's his first. He's left it short. The question is whether Slater can convert for a 20. He can't. He makes the takeout. And he's left that fairly close to the hole. Walsh could see a tricky slider, but he plays off to the side. Slater now. He's left that one a touch close to the middle. Walsh could see a tricky ricochet. And it skips just over the hole. Perhaps another chance for Slater here. He hasn't made the takeout, and he's left a hanger. That's not his best shot. Walsh with the opportunity now. Ooh, he makes the 20, but couldn't take Justin's disc off. That shot will stay in the 5, and will make for quite an interesting endgame as Justin thinks about this shot, considers his options here. Here comes the play. And he chooses just to hit and stick here, and it looks like this could be a bit of a game of cat and mouse as Justin looks for the perfect opportunity to strike. Again, contemplating here. He sticks again. Walsh continues the back and forth as Justin reciprocates. Walsh now sticks another one. Justin to move a little closer, set up his last shot. Walsh would do well to roll away here, as he does. Well struck. Slater has a very difficult last shot, the 20 for the win into the 15 for the tie. Here comes the shot. And he sticks it in the 15, narrowly missed the 20. That is a tie in round two, which means it's three points to one in Walsh's favor. These two players are quite familiar with each other. This is a rematch of the final of the same tournament two years ago. 2014 and Slater prevailed. And it's also a rematch of the final from two months ago, the World Championship which Slater also won. Meanwhile, though, nice conversion has Slater 2-0 ahead. Walsh's open shot brings his Arias to just one. Slater, though, continues with his hot hand. He's found his range in the 20s. It's 3-1 now, and Walsh continues to make open shots. Slater makes another one for 4-2. He doesn't feel like missing, clearly, but Walsh also doesn't feel like giving up, as it's just one 20 advantage to Slater. He makes it two again. Walsh makes another open shot go there. Justin has his shot now, and he drops another one. 6-4, some excellent shots going on here. Walsh, again, keeps the pace. Slater makes another one to guarantee his points in the round. And Walsh makes it 7-6. Justin Slater an opportunity. He makes it a perfect round. Excellent shots there. And Walsh misses the last one, but it doesn't matter. 8-6 in the 20s, Justin Slater takes two points back from the hammer. It's a 3-3 tie in the first game.
All right, round number four setting up. Nathan Walsh leads it off with a 20. And Justin Slater responds in turn. These two players have really found their rhythm now. Walsh sets up, and he makes another one. 2-1. Great start to this round, two each. Walsh now keeps the pressure on. Slater needs to take two points on his hammer to win the, uh, win the game. And Nathan, though, looks, uh, looks intent on forcing a tiebreaker. It's 4-4 now, as Slater just dropped his disc slightly. Walsh now. The first shot past the midway point, it's left as a hanger. And Slater is... I'm not sure if he can make that as a 20. I think he can. It's a, it's a very tough shot. But it puts him well ahead in the round as he leads 5-4 now with the hammer. Walsh leaves another hanger there, unfortunate. Slater can't convert on that one, and he's left an opportunity for Walsh as he makes an excellent little slider shot. Beautifully executed. Slater, though, too excellent now as he leads 6-5. to five. Walsh leaves another one just short, and Slater with the last shot. He knocks it in, and it's 7-5 in the 20s, 5-3 in the points, and Justin Slater has hopped out to win the first game of this final. Settling down for the second game, Nathan Walsh needs to take his five points if he wants to extend this match to a third game. He starts off making the first open 20 of the round and Slater responds. Walsh leaves another hanger. That's the third in these last two rounds that he's left and Slater converts. Walsh levels, but Slater has the hammer in this first round, so Walsh has an uphill battle. Trailing 3-2, he leaves another hanger. This one, Justin can't convert, and he's left a similar hanger from the offside. Walsh just rolls off, couldn't make that, and Slater pulls back defensively, really trying to hold on to his advantage in this round. Walsh couldn't stick, couldn't hold his shooter. It's big time advantage to Justin Slater as he leads by two 20s with the hammer. Walsh cuts his Arias to one, but Slater continues to make the open shots, and that is the difference between these two so far. Walsh makes it to 4-5, but Slater makes his last. It's a 6-4 score in the 20s, and it's 2-0 to Justin Slater. Slater's form in this game has been impressive and prolonged. He holds a singles tournament win streak that extends back to May of 2015, which is incredible, over a year of not losing in a singles tournament is incredibly impressive. He leads 1-0, but Walsh levels with his shot in the second round of game two. He leads 2-1 after that, and Walsh has left another hanger, which Slater converts that one. And Walsh, another one short. Wow. 4-1 in the 20s to Justin, and Walsh just rimmed that one right out. Just a little bit too hard. Slater now shifting to defensive mode as he rolls that one right out of the house. It's now an uphill battle. He looks already sealed in the round despite just passing the halfway point. Walsh just hitting and sticking. They're really playing this one out. It's a formality at this point. It's all over. Justin Slater will lead 4-0 after two quick rounds in game two. Walsh now is taking a minute over his last shot, looking for a bit of practice perhaps. But Justin Slater rode an early 4-1-20 advantage to a comfortable win in, in round two of game two. He leads 4-0, needing just one point in the remaining two rounds to win this championship. He will have the hammer in this third round, looking to close it out. Walsh leading off, and he's left that well short of the hole. Slater now can try to pull the play back to his side of the board, but he sticks on, on Walsh's rather. Walsh plays that one and leaves it leaves it in a uh, in an interesting position now. Slater brings that over to the side of the peg, and Walsh played that with a lot of pace on it. My goodness! And he's left a hanger now for Slater, but he missed it just to the right. Walsh, perhaps for a ricochet, he brought it off a peg, leaving himself plenty of opportunities. As that one is a golden chance now, and he slide across, couldn't make the takeout. He's left his disc well behind the hole. 
he's really in a tough spot now. He's got two of Slater's discs on the board. No 20s scored, so there's, there is an opening, but the window is closing quickly. Walsh has quite a tightrope act here. He's got to manufacture an advantage, but he can't give anything away. He's left a tricky shot there. That one is pretty well guarded behind the peg. Slater could try to raise his own into Walsh's disc, but that is very risky. If Walsh's disc wouldn't move in that instance, Slater would lose both of his. He's got to consider this, really. This is a difficult shot. If you tried the angle raise there, you could make the takeout. You could. It doesn't. It wouldn't even matter if you stick the uh, if you stick the disc that's in the 15, because you've got an excellent chance of, of converting for a 20. You just have to make contact with Walsh's disc. Boy, this is this is a really difficult situation. Slater's taking his time over it, and rightly so. Wow. Slater now lining up the shot. Does he see it through an off angle? And Justin is totally justified in taking his time here. It's incredibly difficult to hit this disc. The peg is blocking the shot through the uh, through the small alleyway on the far side of the board, and his own disc is making it incredibly risky to play through the the, uh, the larger ones. Does he have a chance at just clipping it now? There's a shot, and he went right through it. Missed the whole thing. So he's going to let Nathan disturb the situation here as he could try to come across either way for a 20 very difficult shot though regardless here it is and he's gone just left of the hole from his perspective Slater's options are much more clear now he's just got to play solid defense he's got options in the 10 and the 15 and if he can make a 20 even better he went for the 20 there but went just off the hole Walsh really needs to convert this shot. His own disc is making it a bit more difficult, but he can still get through that gap. Boy, you have to hit this so well. And he missed it. Missed it by a fair bit. Justin Slater take out into the 15 for the win. And there it is. Justin Slater wins 5-3-6-0 to claim his third consecutive Belleville Crokinole Challenge title. As always, thanks for watching Crokinole Center.